and let us all that we can to build a better future. All right, we are returning back to this conflict. And I have to say, Norman Finkelstein has been doing some one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten gut checks to anyone that's been really defending Israel's actions and bombings in Gaza. So, oof, it's going to leave a mark. Oof, it will. Norman is giving a smackdown to a gentleman named Steve Mouthberg. So let's go ahead and play this video and share it with all of you people. And yes, we will be uh, playing the video from the beginning. However, I think it's important to share the oof moment that uh, Jimmy Dore retweeted out. So let's go ahead and play this video and check it all out. The oof moment. The oof. Oof. Where Norman says, you're smiling, but your stupid smirk won't change the fact that the argument you used was used by Hitler to justify the extermination of the Jews. Yes, that's right. Well, let's go ahead and play this video. One. Yeah. Why does not one country in the entire Arab world not want to help their brothers and take them in? Spread them out. You don't all want them in Egypt. You don't all want them in Jordan. You don't want them in Syria. You don't want them in Saudi Arabia. Wait, There's wait, a million countries. This, this, Spread them out. Nobody wants to help them. Th Why? This is a difficult. I'll tell you what. Let's let's pause for a moment. For a moment. Thank you. I'll answer one simple sentence. Make your Why point. Did, make your point. But we we're going to. Why any of the European countries or the United States want Jews before the Nazi Holocaust? Maybe, maybe the Jews were like the Palestinians. They were so horrible. They were so vicious. They were so bestial, or as the current Israeli government calls them, human animals. Maybe that's why none of the European countries and the United States didn't want them. Do you think that's the reason? This is not I'm easy. Curious. This is not easy, but I'm we're going to have to... Gentlemen... Do you think that's the reason? You're smiling, but your stupid smirk won't change the fact that the very argument you used was used like me, by do Hitler. You, sir? Yeah, the same no, argument you used Jew. was used... Now, you can't use that to deflect, but let, let's, let's face it here, folks. The number of deceased is going to be reaching 10,000. If it hasn't gotten there already, it will get there soon. This war, all what it's doing is laying the foundations for the next war to come. The cycle of revenge, hatred, bigotry, brutality is going to keep on repeating over and over and over again. We can't afford this anymore. This is madness at the highest level. And when you have. When you have a freaking politician in Israel calling for a tactical nuclear strike. That's right. Yeah, you heard me. You 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 know you you know that this this has got to stop before all is truly lost. Let's go ahead and play the rest of the video. Could it be because I'm a Jew. And you don't want to do you? Gentlemen, your argument, your argument was used by Hitler to justify the extermination of the Jews. Nobody What's my argument? Wants What's my argument? Nobody What's my wants argument? them As because what? they're so terrible and so horrible. You're a Nazi speaking now <laughs> in those kinds of arguments. The, the funny, this, this has become very contentious. We're going to take a break. I want to thank you both. Not on my part. Not on my doctor, part. I want to thank Dr. Norman Finkelstein, uh, as well as uh, Steve Malsberg, uh, for this uh, very passionate and, uh, as you can see, very... Yes, very passionate. Well, let's go ahead and pull up this here real quick, because if there's ever a kind of oof moment, Norman gave that boy an oof. Oof, 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 oof. So shout out to Norman. But by the way, remember that reference I brought up of nuking Gaza as a possibility? Well, turns out this uh, minister, Israeli heritage minister, uh, Amichai Elihu, uh, was, has suggested that his country could launch a nuclear strike on Gaza. Now, 
let's let's be clear here. Okay, if if you were to use a weapon of that magnitude, that destruction, you won't believe the death toll that will follow. Now he could have been being humorous about it, but that's that's neither here or there. That's something you don't joke about. Okay, that's actually rather frightening. And it's the one thing you don't want to do because guess what? Let's say let's say Israel went along with that uh, big brain idea. Okay, let's let's just say they did that for a second. Let's let's just say that they did. Well, there's a thing called fallout once that nuke is dropped. So it won't be only the people in Gaza, but it'll be people in Israel and the other outlying countries as well that border Israel, like Egypt, Syria, Jordan, Lebanon. You know, and 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 trust me on it. Radiation, especially from a weapon of mass destruction like a nuke, uh, it's it's not a good thing for the human body. Does that anyone not see just how insane the government that Netanyahu created is? Not only is it an apartheid government, they got people like this making comments like that just off the hip for all the media to share. Everyone sees it. Everyone knows about it. Everyone talks about it. This this is insanity. And he's an Israeli heritage minister. Oh, isn't that special? He said this during an interview on Sunday uh, with Radio uh, Klo Burma, uh, who is, uh, again, a member of the far-right uh, political party there, was asked if Israel could drop an atomic bomb on the Palestinian enclave. The minister replied, this is one of the possibilities. But don't worry. He also spoke out uh, against helping uh, inhabitants of Gaza, which have been under siege. He said, we wouldn't hand the Nazis humanitarian aid. There's no such thing as uninvolved civilians in Gaza. You know, let's, 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 let's talk about the aftermath of the Second World War, all right? The Allied powers, the Soviet Union, United States, France, Great Britain, you know, they, they had to rebuild the world, okay? A better future. <coughs> and of course, guess what? Germany was split in two. And there was that big iron curtain, that iron wall, a wall so big it would make Trump's head spin for days. And Berlin was split in two. There was a West Berlin and an East Berlin. Now, the thing is, you know, in the aftermath of the war, um, there, there was a point to where West Berlin was getting blocked off and getting food and supplies. And the Americans and other nations we're doing food aid and drops for the people of West Berlin. We're not too long ago. They were once part of the Third Reich. You see, what this minister and anyone that's defending Israel's actions fail to realize is that the people of Gaza have been under this jackboot for 75 years. Of course, they're going to be angry at said government and institutions that have been putting them in an open air prison. This isn't good. Now, I want to take this article down here for a second. And shared this video from the beginning. Because it's only it's only fair that we share things from the beginning. So let's pull up this video and start it off on how this conversation got started. Uh, Finkelstein, who is an American political scientist, an activist, an expert on the Arab-Israeli conflict. We're also joined by TV and radio personality, syndicated columnist and political commentator who's worked with me in the past. And you've seen us together, sometimes agreeing and sometimes not agreeing. Steve Malsberg. Uh, gentlemen, I'd like to thank both of you for uh, joining us. This is a this is a heck of a thing that we're in right now, and one can't help but think, and I think we're making this point that it doesn't start with just what happened with Hamas. This has been taking place for some time now, Dr. Finkelstein. I'd like for you to start us on this discussion of how and when this thing got out of hand to the point where it is now being talked about in terms of a prelude to a potential World War III. What, 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 what is the genesis of this in, in your eyes? Without, I mean, being too descriptive of everything that's happened over the last hundred years, where did this thing really get away from us? Since 2006, when there were elections in the West Bank in Gaza, which, Hamas won. These elections were described by former U.S. President Jimmy Carter as, quote, completely honest and fair. After these elections were held, Israel and then the United States and the EU, the European Union, 
slap the brutal blockade on Gaza. Now, I would like you listeners to hear the facts very closely. A population that consists 70% of refugees and their descendants, half of children, nobody, let your listeners hear closely, nobody, with the, with the rarest exception, is allowed to go into Gaza or is allowed to leave Gaza. According to humanitarian organizations, before October 7th, half of the population of Gaza was described as suffering from severe food insecurity. Let me stop you, but Professor, I'm gonna, I'm gonna stop you there because I think that gets to, in many ways, um, the genesis of the problem, and that is you do have a people who are isolated, and Israel- You have people, and, you have people who have been confined, immured in a concentration camp for 20 years. That is a strong and, word. Now, I wanted to let Norman speak for a while. As soon as you hear this smirk and laughter, all, all, all I have to say is, why, why are you laughing? Because Israel has the power to shut off water, food, electricity, gas, etc. Any kind of aid whatsoever going into Gaza. And this history between the Palestinians and the Israelis is so brutal. And it is very complex. But we can understand that if you keep on oppressing somebody, keep on pushing them around, of course they're going to fight back. It's happened throughout all of human history. We've seen this. This isn't the first time. But we're also witnessing a full-on destruction. I mean, the death toll has now reached up to 8,000, and it's going to get up to 10,000. My goodness. We're witnessing a global power, or a regional superpower in the Middle East systematically target hospitals, refugee centers, schools, etc. For what? Supposed terrorists? I want to switch things up here real quick and pull up this video here from Hotspot. As a condition to enter Gaza under IDF air support, outlets, news outlets, had to submit all materials and footage to the Israeli military for review prior to publication. CNN has agreed to those terms here. Let's go ahead and play it here real quick. So, in other words, war crimes on CNN? What? No, never. CNN would never manipulate the news. Yesterday, CNN's Jeremy Diamond went into Gaza on an IDF embed. I should note that journalists embedded with the IDF in Gaza operate under the observation of Israeli commanders in the field <laughs> and are not permitted to move unaccompanied within the Gaza Strip. As a condition to enter Gaza under IDF escort, outlets have to submit all materials and footage to the Israeli military for review prior to publication. CNN has agreed to these terms in order to provide a limited window into Israel's operations in Gaza. Now let's have democracy in the chat. Type one if you think CNN will be an outlet of integrity and make sure that the facts are shared and nothing would be manipulated, no audio, video, or interviews, etc. Type two, man, we ain't, we ain't, we're not we're not going to see the full picture. Why'd you even ask that question, man? What's wrong with you? I wonder how many twos we're going to get in the chat. I, I wonder. I wonder. I wonder. Jeremy. So let's go ahead and play this video. That, that, that is a strong word. So I, well, actually, but, but what actually, I'm, quoting, I'm quoting Baruch Kimmerling, the eminent sociologist from Hebrew University, who described Gaza as, quote, the largest concentration camp ever. And I have, now, and I, hold on, I have read those quotes. I understand them. I understand from whence that feeling comes. I want to get Stephen here so he has an opportunity to respond to the accusation that essentially Israel is oppressing people and doing it on purpose and has been doing it for years and years now. How, how, what would be the. And look, not, not, not to not to simplify it, but it's the world's most one sided fist fight. I mean, Israel has armored tanks, 
helicopters, airplanes, drones, big concrete walls, barbed wire fences, security. I mean, all, all, all this stuff. I, I really got to wonder how they got that haymaker punch on October 7th. But anyways, anyways, I digress. It's just, it's just a little curious. That's all. How that happened? Sometimes people let their guards down. That, that happens. Sometimes a person lets their guard down and they get clobbed upside the head. It happens. It happens. A response, uh, Steve, for, for that charge, which is not just being made by Dr. Finkelstein. We hear it all the time in the Arab world. In of course you do. Mm -hmm. uh, of course you do. Because the Palestinians teach their kids to hate the Jew, to kill the Jew. And the Israelis do the same. Vice versa. Hatred teaches hatred. It's like an Uno reverse card happening over and over again. That there is no Israel. And I'm not going back in history for that. I'm going to this year. The European Union passed a resolution against the Palestinian textbooks, which call for exactly what I said. Uh, the U.S. Congress has taken that up this year as well. Uh, there's also in the Palestinian Authority, the moderates, the good guys, um, they pay for slay. And the U.S. Congress has taken that up. They reward the families of the terrorist animals who go into Israel and slaughter innocent civilians. But, but let's you suppose, that, but Steve, I'm, you, I'm, you do but, that, but, but, but oh, let me, you, that you don't want to hear. No, 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 oh, no, 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 okay. no, 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 please. Israel repressing people. No, no, oh, no, okay, okay. no, no. What you're saying is the Arabs and Palestinians hate Jews. And that's not I'm a shock. Saying, no, 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 no. That, I'm saying, I'm, I'm telling you why. Okay. One reason why. They teach their children this. Yeah. <clears throat> the pot calling kettle black. Israel does the same thing too. It's almost like this hatred has been taught by both sides for generations and infinitum. Crime for crime. Hate for hate. Brutality against brutality. Murder for murder. It's almost as if it's intertwined. And maybe the first step is realizing just how stupid the whole thing is. There is a possibility for a better future, maybe peace in our time. We won't witness it, and probably neither will your great-grandchildren either, but something has to be done. It's been repeating over and over again. Aren't people tired of it yet? Aren't they just burnt out by it yet? I mean, eventually, I hope, one day, someday, I probably won't see it. But maybe both sides will realize, hey, why are we fighting each other again? Why do I hate you again? Why should I hate you? Why should I hate my brother? I don't know. One can, one, one can dream. One can most certainly dream. Someday. Just not today. Yeah. On television shows, in textbooks, what kind of civilization, what other civilization does that? What other people do that? Okay. The, uh, look, I'm I'm sorry to keep on pausing, but a lot of civilizations and empires have done that to inspire their people to hate the other, to invade another kingdom, nation, city, state, territory. It's 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 human history 101. We 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 we've been doing that for centuries to each other, hating the other. Every nation has done it. Every kingdom has done it. It's 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 there. We have done it to each other. Man's inhumanity to man. This isn't anything brand new. This is not the first time we're shocker. Oh my god, another group hates another group. Whoa! I never saw that before. The world, for the most part, with the exception of the EU and America, at times is silent. Well, ask actually, if you were going to ask me that question and I was going to answer it, I'll let Dr. Finkelstein answer it. But what kind of country does that? Actually, the United States, when it comes to Iran, Russia, China, and Venezuela. But that's, <laughs> that's another point. That's not teaching children in school and on their Sesame Street. That's raising children <laughs> to kill the Jew. Okay. Well, That's not uh, it. The media uh, news shows. Boy, uh, this guy has his bias. But it's, that's been taught for a very long time. We, every nation has done this said crime. 
of hating the other, of hating our brothers. Can we not ever get to a better future? Is, is, that, is that truly the bridge too far? I guess it is. That's a different story. Okay, all right. Uh, I, I would argue it's not because essentially when you every night on your newscasts tell people that these countries are awful, that's how wars start. And that's the reason the ridiculousness of Iraq happened as well as Afghanistan. But Dr. Finkelstein, I'd like for you to answer his legitimate charge that if you're Arab or come from a Palestinian community or any of these encampments in places like Jordan, you really are being told to hate Jews. That's sort of undeniable, right? Well, I'm not going to address that right now. Let me address the substance of his, his comment. Okay. I ask you now, if you were born into a concentration camp and you had no hope whatsoever of ever seeing the light of day, except those 25 miles by five miles, no hope of a job, no hope of a full stomach, no hope of ever realizing any of your hopes and dreams. And then beside that, beside that, every few years as your other expert reading from Israeli talking points, must know, <laughs> as he must know, every few years, Israel, in its satanic language, talks about, quote, mowing the lawn in Gaza. And then your other expert seems to believe that they need textbooks to incite them to hate Israelis. I got news for you, sir. My parents were in the concentration camps. My parents did not need Jewish textbooks to convince them to hate Germans. Now, by the way here, real quick, remember in that previous video where he was accusing Norma of saying, like, oh, you hate me because I'm a Jew or anything else? Norman's parents were in a goddamn concentration camp. What does that tell you? Again, just, just, just to be clear here, understand the words that Norman is saying here, folks. It was their All real right. life All experience right. that okay. convinced okay. them. And 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 he's he's like dismissing, like, okay, okay, whatever, whatever. Can I? Can I? Can okay. I? I'd like to. I'd like to. I'd like to pause for a moment and ask a question because it doesn't seem like in this moment as apoplectic as we all are discussing this from all sides, um, I can't help but want to go back to the history of this. And let me ask you this question. Call me naive. If it was possible to go back in history and undo or redo the way things were shaped during the Balfour Agreement, where we decided that this land would be essentially given to a people who were, by the way, some of the most oppressed people in the history of the world, not just due to the anti-Semitism that's always existed in Europe, but what happened during World War II because of the Nazis. We all understand that these are a people who deserve to have a place and some dignity, but in the process of giving them that place and that dignity, another people say they lost their place and their dignity. Steve, if the UN and the Brits could do this again, should they have done it differently? The biggest mistake any Western nation did was actually get involved in this. And now we're stuck forever. Okay? I understand there might have been some good intentions, but hey, sometimes the best laid intentions are the uh, pathway to hell. Okay? Yeah, yeah, you know, just 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 remember, no good deed goes unpunished. You, you you're trying to help, but just like a terrible uh late evening sitcom on on old traditional television, it's one bad one bad show and uh the jokes just usually fall flat, okay? So, it's a, it was a bad idea. 
there's 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 no going back in time and fixing or doing it or doing a what if because there there is no what if there are no do overs in life the ink is already dry you, you you couldn't you couldn't make it better even if you did try should there have been a more accepting way of giving Jews their place and their dignity without making the people who were there feel like they lost theirs is that a fair question it- I don't think anything would have mattered. The Jews were attacked from the second the whole concept of Israel was attacked from the second it was discussed. And I think the history that really is relevant, more relevant with all due respect to you, Rick, of course, yeah. uh, is uh, is uh, Gaza. I mean, first of all, you know, all this give the land back. How many times have we heard over the course of many, many, many years, give the land back to the Palestinians? Well, when Israel fought wars and took uh, the Sinai, and the Gaza, they took it from Egypt. When they took Jerusalem and they took the West Bank, they took it from Jordan. And when they took, of course, the Golan Heights, they took it from Syria. So when they say give it back to the Palestinians, um, they didn't have it when Israel took it in these wars. So I guess the Arab countries stole it from the Palestinians. That's number one. Yeah. Why does not one country in the entire Arab world not want to help their brothers. So now we're returning back to the video we played in question. And here's where Norman gives his gut check to this uh, to this uh, person who seems possessed. By the way, I want to give a shout out to Roger Meadows, who did post on Rockfin. It is within international law for Palestinians who have, been, who have the legal rights to resist with violence if they are being occupied by an occupying force. But there are limits such as you can't target civilians, yet they are within their legal boundaries. And take them in. Spread them out. You don't all want them in Egypt. You don't all want them in Jordan. You don't want them in Syria. You don't want them in Saudi Arabia. Wait, wait, There's a million countries. This, this, Spread this, them out. Nobody wants to help them. This, Why? This is a difficult... Co- I'll tell you what. Let's let's pause for a moment. For a moment. Thank you. I'll answer one simple sentence. Make your Why point. Have, make your point. But we, we're going to... any of the European countries or the United States want Jews before the Nazi Holocaust. Maybe, maybe the Jews were like the Palestinians. They were so horrible. They were so vicious. They were so bestial, or as the current Israeli government calls them, human animals. Maybe that's why none of the European countries and the United States didn't want them. Do you think that's the reason? This is not easy. This is not easy, but we're going to have to. Gentlemen, you think that's the reason you're smiling, but your stupid smirk won't change the fact that the very argument you used was used by Hitler. And he goes like, you don't like me, do you, sir? Well, how can anybody like you? I mean, you're just you're not seeing the bigger picture here. The same no, argument you used Jew, was used by he... him. And he goes on deflecting, saying, oh, because he's Jewish. Norman's parents were in a concentration camp. So, you know, he, he you can't really use that card against him. But OK, fine. You want to get sympathy points. Because I'm a Jew. And you don't Jews, the do you? Gentlemen. Your argument. Your argument was used by Hitler to justify the extermination of the Jews. Nobody. What's my argument? What's my argument? Nobody wants them because they're so terrible and so horrible. You're a Nazi speaking now (laughs) in those kinds of arguments. Shout to Norman. Hey, Norman gave him a gut check, and all I got to say is. Oof. 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 Oof, oof, oof. An epic win. Truly it is. But however, 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 let's look at the bigger picture here. The bigger picture is, is that, unfortunately, the bombings and attacks and ground invasion are ongoing. Now, whether or not the numbers, uh, the death toll reaches past 10,000, God forbid it does get to that number, but it looks like it will. And all what this will do is cause further pain down the road. I don't know what peace in our time looks like, but war seems to be eternal. And no one, no leader, no politician is going to do the right thing. 
And unfortunately, we will witness more conflicts like this for years to come. Unless we say enough. Unless clearer minds do prevail. Because one day, a conflict will arise. If it's not this, then another. That will lead towards nations. Going back to the sequel we all dread. A third world war. We don't want that. We have to be better. We cannot hate our brother. We have to push forward for a better future. And the first step is through understanding and breaking the current systems that keep us like this. What that world looks like or how we'll get there, I don't know. But we have to make that attempt. 